Rip the skin right off the toy. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how you doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. I'm sorry, Pervert, you can't just destroy styrofoam all over the patio, I'm sorry. Always an adventure with the young dog around. Get into the video later in the day because when I tried earlier, it was 103 degrees outside. I learned that it can get so hot outside that it cracks your patio all the way across. I, don't, I think it's okay, it's bright, not a big deal can be sealed over. I don't know. Now, whenever I think something's not a big deal, the more experienced homeowners usually jump in and tell me that what I thought was no big deal actually means like the entire foundation's gonna come falling down. Oh, there's the skin. I can probably put that back together. Maybe. So there's probably gonna be some informality to the video because of the heat. I have to have a fan blowing on the camera at all times. I'll be sure to get away from the camera so the mic won't be picking it up as much, hopefully, since I'm not staying right next to it. All I'm doing right now is just repotting a palm tree. Repotted a banana tree last year and there was some good feedback from people that just like, seemed to enjoy or learn something from just watching someone repot something. I figured that what we will do. There'll be a lot of little disclaimers in the video about like, you know, maybe don't repot something when it's 103 degrees outside. And I will try my best to just kind of focus and talk about some basic stuff, just some stuff that's good to know when repotting a palm tree, general information. You know what, I'm gonna try it without the fan first. Maybe since the sun went away, it's, it'll be okay. I should probably start off by talking about like what, what kind of palm tree this is right here. This is a mule palm. It's a hybrid between a queen palm and a butia palm. Butia capitata, really more likely odorata. Really sturdy palms, pretty cold hardy. They're just excellent palm trees. Very easy to grow. They can take lots of different types of conditions. This video is not really about this palm tree specifically. I'm pretty sure that somewhere in the last 800 videos, there should be a video on the mule palms. If there is, I'll link it below and put it in a card at the end of the video if you just want to know more about this plant specifically. It's palm tree. Seems pretty overdue for a repot. This has been in this container for a few years now. With palm trees, there is a perception, an idea, just a very broad generalization that they like to be root bound. They don't need to be repotted very often. I'm not going to try and like debunk that. I'm just going to say anecdotally from my like 20 something years of experience, they grow better when they get repotted on a regular basis. Just like a normal house plant, every other year you can push it to every two and a half to three years with a lot of different types, they just grow better. Think about it, when these things are at a grower, they're gonna go from just being a little twig put into a pot that's way too big for it, and the next year they're gonna be maybe a couple feet tall and bumped all the way up into a 15 gallon container that looks way too big for it. But with the proper irrigation and fertilizing and like the right schedule, they fill those pots out in a year. But if you were to just leave them in those containers, their growth is going to eventually slow down. There's a difference between a plant surviving and thriving. To get better growth out of the plant, I like to repot them every few years. By doing that, you're not going to have to be fertilizing them constantly, so you need to stay on top of it. I'll go ahead and get this out of the container. You'll be able to see there's probably not going to be a ton of soil down lower in here. It's going to be mostly roots. Turbo, you're in the way, dude. You gotta get out. It's not looking too bad. Not anywhere near as root bound as I thought it was going to be. I was expecting this to be much more root bound than it actually is. You can still see there's some patches of soil in here, which is great. Sometimes with palm trees, when you go more than maybe a year past when I should have repotted them, like it's just roots. Not much going on there as far as soil goes, and that's when you have to be on top of that fertilizing, like just constantly on top of it, because they have to get all their nutrients from the water. There's not gonna be a lot of mineral content in a container that doesn't have any soil, right? Uh, hey. Excuse you, get out of there. Turbo, get out. Not the case with this one. This is looking pretty good. I don't have to worry about disturbing the root mass very much. I repotted a queen palm a couple months ago that was just so root wrapped because it'd been in the container for quite, it was, I think it was in a 15 or 20 gallon container and the thing's probably 15 feet tall. So I had to go through and cut a lot of the roots out. I don't need to do that with this one, really just making sure to go around with my fingers, just loosening it a little bit. That should do the trick. There's no swirling, plant looks good. Typical repotting plant stuff, right? Don't want it to be root wrapped. And bump it up to at least an inch on the outside diameter. This is going to be, I think, about a two and a half inch bump on the outside. We have to wait and see. The pot has like a, it's got a weird shape to it. Use the shovel as a guide to see how far down I need to fill the container with soil before I try and drop it in there. It should be good. I'm not going to have to go too deep. So this is a 28 inch container. I have a hole drilled in the bottom. It's a two inch, very large hole drainage. 
really important with just about all plants, especially palm trees, most palm trees. Remember, I'm talking broad generalizations in this video, like plants that you might pick up from a box store, Eureka palms, cat palms, majesty palms. Sometimes you see the mule palms at the big box stores. Not that often, but it's, they're starting to become more popular, which is great because they're sturdy palm trees. Got a light layer of soil in the container. Well, it's not that light. It's a few inches deep. Plenty to keep the palm tree at the right depth. I expect it to kind of settle down some. Speaking of soil, hey Tobes, look at you. You got a big smile on your face. I know it's hot outside. He was just in the pool. He's, he's okay. They go in and out of there. They're pretty good at regulating the sun's not out, but I'll probably take them aside in just a minute just to be safe. All those palm trees I was talking about, your typical palm trees are going to want a potty mix that drains freely and it has some grit to it and it has some airiness to it. This particular potting soil is a cocoa peat blend that has like yucca, alfalfa meal, and a whole bunch of great stuff in it. There's a little bit of perlite in there and there's cocoa chip and husk. It's a nice airy mix with some organic material. You can buy pre-made potting mixes for palms and cactus. Where I live, they only sell them in little bitty bags and like 12 bucks a pop. That's, that's not practical for what I do. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense. And really it's, I think, more economical if you're planting up multiples to just get an all-purpose potting mix and add in some bark chips, like some orchid bark, maybe some chunky perlite, and maybe a handful of compost to help liven it up. Not too much because potting soil, soil in general, will compact over time the more it breaks down, and adding a lot of organics will cause it to break down and compact more quickly. The issue with the compacting is that it's not going to drain as well, and you have a lot of anaerobic action going on inside that soil, which they tend to not like. Again, talking about the general palm trees you might find at a big box store. There are plenty that can grow in swampy conditions that don't care, but you're not likely to find those at like your local hardware store. All right, drop that in there. Oh, my mic is in off. Could you hear any of that? We'll, we'll try to go with the voiceover. All right, let's drop it in there. Now, I'd say that's probably about an inch and a half on the outside diameter here. Maybe, maybe at most, this isn't, a huge upgrade for the plant, but in a way it is. The reason I knew that it was time to repot this palm tree was because it just, it hasn't been growing. Water it, fertilize it. It's not getting anything out of it. So what little soil was left in that root mass doesn't have much going on in it. Over time, something to remember here with potted plants, all of them, there's a lot more water moving through those containers. They're not sitting in the ground where nutrients can keep coming back to them the minerals can start building up, I should say. It flushes out every time you water the plant. A little bit more goes out. So you have to continually add that back in to keep it going. And then eventually, once enough of the soil's gone, there's no place for those minerals, minerals, nutrients, they're really minerals. There's no place for those to hang out anymore. So getting some fresh soil in here is one, going to provide a better environment for the various fungus and all those minerals that I was talking about. And uh, more water retention when you lose a lot of the soil the water just rushes right out of there get a nice layer of mix up here and then i'll have to just very slowly work that down to the cracks try not to talk while the plastic is crinkling I mentioned earlier in the video that in general like with all plants not just palm trees but usually one to two inches on the outside diameter is plenty to get them going I usually prefer with a palm tree to go a couple of inches at the minimum, but this is the largest container that I have around and with you know, the way things have been the last few years, the economy and whatnot, larger pots are not as easy to get a hold of, at least not large, sturdy pots. I find some at a store that I'm not going to mention the name of, but they just, they didn't feel like they would hold up to be moved around a lot. I have to move these pots in and out. They get scooted all over the place. It needs to be fairly sturdy. I'm not saying that the pots don't exist, they do, but they're like, three to six hundred dollars and I just I don't think that that's necessary when I have something that will do the trick for a couple of years. Okay now I just need to water this you know to be smart I should put this back where it goes it's just going to get heavier when I water it. So I'm going to pull this back over to where it's supposed to be and, and finish talking about some palm tree stuff. All right give this plant a nice hefty drink. Gotta burp the soil let all the bubbles come out. I'll probably take a minute to get all that soil worked down in there. I may even have to add some more. That's the whole point of watering them in nice and heavily. I also, I don't know if you, if you notice that big lip there, generally an inch down is a good way to go. 
standard houseplant stuff, I usually like to go a little bit further than that so that I can give the plants really heavy drinks without having to come back and add more and letting it drain and add more. It's easier to give them a nice, thorough, heavy soak when you have more of a lip there for the water to move around. It does make it hard if you want to plant a trailer over the front, so that's something to keep in mind. There are some spots where the soil is heavier than in others. After multiple waterings, that will even itself out. The objective here is to make sure that the surface of the soil from the original root ball is level with the soil that got put in there. Sometimes it's okay to actually have the root ball sitting up, maybe an inch or so, especially if you're planting something that likes drier conditions, but you live someplace that's really, really humid and really rainy, that can help make a difference when it comes to susceptibility to rot. You just have to research the type of palm tree and find out what they like. There are some that won't respond well to that, and there are others that just that will not care at all. It just really depends on the type that you're growing. And that same thing I should have mentioned is true when it comes to root pruning. So I'd mentioned with that queen palm in a different video how I had to take a box cutter and cut the roots up on that one. There are some palm trees where cutting a single segment of the root will end up killing off that entire root, like sable, well, sable palmettos, I know for sure. But again, with the common box store type palm trees, probably not something you're going to have to worry about. You see how quickly the water's moving out the bottom of the pot? That's what I wanted to see. It's not pooling on the surface for very long and it's coming right out of the bottom. Great example to us talking about how the nutrients flush out of these things very, very quickly. So it's important to keep our plants hydrated, but I also have to remember once the soil's moist, once that's been fully watered, you're done. You don't need to keep going and going and going. Then it's just washing all the good stuff out of there. So glad to have that done. Wanted to get this palm tree. I have another mule palm that's going to get repotted too. I don't see a reason to do both in the same video that would probably get redundant it'd just be everything you just saw again so no reason to do that with pretty much every palm tree i've grown i've always noticed you repot them they're gonna sit still for a little while like all plants do and then just boom this should put out a fair amount of growth this palm has had this spear right here that's just started to open just barely for about three or four months and that's not normal the mule palms, they're generally pretty quick growers. Like I mentioned, that's how I knew that it was time to get this plant repotted. It's gonna be much, much happier now. Okay, now the disclaimer part though. I mentioned there would be some of those. One, I told y'all it was hot. It's not normally a great idea to repot the plants when it's 103 degrees outside, which is not, it's cooled down. It's only 97 now and we're in the shade. That's still pretty toasty. These will be up on drip and I have this scooted. That's the word, yeah. All the way back as far as it can go where it's going to get afternoon shades. So it's be getting bright light in the morning, filtered light in the afternoon for at least a few weeks while it takes some time to get its roots out for it to recover from any potential damage that may have happened to those roots when I repotted it. I think I was pretty gentle with it, but it's just a safety measure for the plant with the heat that is going through here right now. And that the alternative with this palm tree was to leave it in the conditions that it was in in that other container where it was so hard to keep it hydrated. At least this way, there's some fresh soil on top. There's more soil around the diameter of the plant, around the perimeter of the plant. It's gonna help hold on to some moisture. In the long run, I think that this will be better. And you saw that the container isn't a giant upgrade for the palm tree. So it's not like all that moisture is gonna be wicking away to where it's not accessible, especially with the plant on drip. It's gonna get watered a few times a day throughout this heat spell, so it should be fine. And then the safety thing, be careful. I'm experienced, been doing this for years. I know when to take the breaks. There's the fan, have the umbrella over there, a pool, air conditioning in the house. So just be careful out there. And also just disregard all of this if you're watching this video when it's not piping hot outside, the little flames ticking on the camera. Okay, gotta let it cool off, back in a minute. Okay, we're back. Was that a good millisecond for y'all? I didn't even need to talk about what was going on. However, discovered something fun. I can stream the baseball games on my phone from the TiVo. Didn't know that was an option, so just expect all of my videos from now on to be full of me being extremely distracted and getting off topic like I just did. I know, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but the MLB app, you can't stream your local teams, and Bally Sports hasn't added the Cardinals yet, so yeah, you gotta be inside by the TV to see the game, and I'm not, anyways, palm tree. Looking at the leaves, can tell that it's still healthy, so I know that I hadn't gone way too long without the repot leaves, the fronds, nice and green. There are some burnt tips on here. You can see up there, they're more desiccated tips. They're not really burnt. This palm tree went down to 13 degrees Fahrenheit last winter, which generally is going to cause some foliar burn. And it's recovering fine from that. Well, I can't say that. It will recover fine from that once it puts out some new growth and the old stuff can come off of the plant and get shed. 
which hopefully will be happening sooner than later now that there's some fresh soil in the container. Things to look out for if you're not having those nice green leaves, you're noticing different spottings, like yellow spots, dark spots, discoloration. Palm trees are susceptible to mineral deficiencies like uh, potassium, magnesium, manganese, nitrogen, iron. I think, I think those are the main ones. Those are the things you wanna look for in a palm fertilizer. With my palm trees, I like palm gain. It's a pretty popular, just great all-purpose fertilizer made for palm trees. Sorry, the distraction happened. I looked over and saw my phone, got distracted by the game. Keeping it professional, watching a baseball game while trying to be informative about plant care. We'll work some of that into the top of the soil here probably in a few weeks. I don't see a reason right now. I mostly just want to get this plant rehydrated. That's my main objective and then I'll be more on top of the feeding. There's also fresh soil in here. When you have fresh soil you can, can usually get away a little bit longer without adding the soil releases and those things. Osmocote usually fine. There can be uh, differences with fertilizers and soil conditions and deficiencies based on the pH of your water. Over time, that can affect the pH that's within your potting mix. A good potting mix should be pH neutral to slightly acidic. It tends to be more on the acidic side, whereas cocoa peat, it's not actually peat, it's just called cocoa peat, that tends to be more on the neutral side, have more of a neutral holding capacity. Whereas peat will lend itself to being more acidic, which is generally a palm tree's jam. I usually like things more on the aesthetic side. It can also influence the deficiencies. So those are things to look out for. There's fusarium, wealth, and I mean, I could go on and on and on about all the different things that can go wrong with the palm trees. But that's not really the point of the video. It's just a repot. Here's what I do. I don't have like a secret potting mix recipe, at least not anymore. I used to mix my own, but honestly with the channel, I just don't have time these days. I'll add to it. I will add earthworm castings into this. I like the sea kelp great stuff the palm trees seem to enjoy it and like i mentioned before a standard potting mix you can add some bark chips to that and get some gritty material like a coarse sand work that into their earthworm castings and just help liven that mix up and it'll usually be fine palm trees typically aren't terribly demanding i mean heck look at this one down there that's a 20 something foot tall alexander palm in a 36 inch pot and it's been in that pot for a long time for many 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 years. Just make sure to top it off every single spring with some nice fresh mix, maybe a handful or two of compost to richen it up, and then you just gotta stay on top of the fertilizing. Fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. And I don't mean going over the recommended dosage, I mean just being really consistent with it. All that good stuff's not down there in the soil anymore. Probably not as much anyways, because it would imagine that that's a lot of root there underneath that palm tree. It's not even unusual to see very large 15, 25 foot palm trees in tiny little containers. They're usually hooked up to irrigation so that they stay well hydrated. They're probably being fed on a regular occasion. Basically growing them hydroponically at that point. What really, I mean, peat doesn't really do much for soil. Neither does the cocoa, at least not for a long time. So even that's kind of hydroponic. If you want to get technical, it doesn't matter. Last disclaimer, you may have noticed I'm bouncing between saying nutrients and minerals. Proper term is minerals. It's just myself and a lot of gardeners. We have a bad habit of calling them nutrients. They're interchangeable, even though they're not the same thing. So if that threw anybody off, my apologies. Just trying to correct a bad habit. That'll probably take a while to do. I like how he's laying here. He's waiting for me to turn the shower on. He thinks he's gonna get to play in the water, which he probably will, because it is super hot out here. Need to cool off, need to rinse off. Palm tree got a repot. Like I said, if you do this in the heat, be careful of your own health and don't push the plant right back into direct sun. Keep it well hydrated, don't let it dry out for very long, if at all. So let me stay consistently moist and also good drainage, sharp drainage. Want the water to move right through that container. That's it, that's all. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Do you have some fun magical mixes that you use with your palm trees and you make up your own soil blends? I'm sure lots of people would appreciate your recipes down there in the comment section. Always a great place to learn more information. And I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.